Today we're talking about photography printers and more specifically I want to go through three main reasons why I think you should be buying a professional printer for creating prints at home. So you take a photo. By all accounts, it is one of the best photos you've ever taken. You, you cannot wait to get home to edit this photo. So you dump the card. You put the photo into Lightroom. You don't use a preset because th this one's special. You put it into Photoshop and you spend hours fine tuning every single highlight until finally, finally, you finish the edit and you hit send. And then you wait. Two days pass and it finally arrives. You cannot wait to open this print. You tear open the packaging, but when you finally lay your eyes on it, your heart sinks. The white balance is off. The saturation is all over the place. The blacks are too high. You wish you'd added just a little bit more sharpening. And with that, a little piece of you just withers away. Okay, I might've got a little bit carried away there, but the, the point I'm making is even for experienced photographers, it's not always that easy to anticipate how a print is going to come out. Maybe when you're editing, the brightness on the screen was off, or it was golden hour so your white balance was off because your eyes had adjusted to the warm light or you forgot to check the histogram to make sure that your blacks and your whites were all correct. Print as a medium is just so unforgiving compared to something like Instagram. Instead of looking at a five inch screen that auto adjusts to whatever brightness it needs to be, when a photo is blown up to eight by 10 or 12 by 18 or even larger on true white paper, there really is no hiding these kinds of flaws. But having the ability to print your own work at home, print smaller sample prints to be able to check things like the color balance, the white balance, everything that's within that photo, these are all things that you can be trying and testing as you go along. And this goes back to how you even shoot those photos in the first place. Maybe you improve your exposure next time or you add a little rim light to, to increase the highlights and make that object, that subject really pop. These are things that not only increase the quality of the print, but actually increase your photography and improve your photography overall. So the problem with this right now is it's just, it's just kind of a mess, really. I set it up as a standing desk because I thought, you know, it'd be nice to stand up and move around a little bit. But after a long day at work, the last thing I want to do is and stand up for another three hours editing photos or videos. So my initial thought was to have something, something kind of like this. So it's freestanding. I can sort of move it around and pull it out when I need to and push it back. But while the height is literally perfect, the piece that was on there, even if I turn it upside down, it's not wide enough to support the rubber feet of the printer. So for now, I think I'm just gonna put it on the desk so that I can get it running. And the second reason to own your own printer is kind of linked to the first one really, and I guess it's it's really the reasoning behind it, but it's, it's the fact that you have full total control of the creative process. And this is something that's very personal for me, and it's it's really a lot of the reason why I have my own printer and why I like to create my own prints. And it's, it's the satisfaction that you get from being able to create a piece of art, a piece of work from start to finish. As you'll know, if you're a subscriber to the channel, I love to make things. I love making art. I live for the feeling of creating something from nothing. It's it's just special. And when you print your own photos, you're you're closing the loop. You're taking an idea, something from concept to setup to what are the camera settings, to the framing, to taking the shot, to editing, to then the final step, the final piece of the puzzle, which is printing that photo. 
And then you can even sign the photo and choose the frame and assemble everything together and present together the sum total of your efforts. For me, there's just something about sending off your artwork to a print shop, to someone else to finish. It's like starting a sculpture and doing 99% of the work and then someone comes along and just kind of finishes it off for you. To me, it, it just feels like a little bit of an anti-climax after you've put in all that work to let someone else kind of finish it off. And when you print your own photo, that that is yours. That is your work alone. No one else had any kind of hand in it. It was all you. And I don't know, maybe I'm, Maybe I'm too sentimental, but that, that's special to me. Of course, the least exciting, I think, but one of the main reasons why a lot of people choose to print their own work at home is the cost. I'm not gonna go into specific calculations of how much printing at home it costs versus a print shop, because it's gonna depend on so many different variables. The costs of local print shops around you, the type of paper you use, the size of the prints you want, and therefore the type of printer that you need and the ink that it takes, these things all change drastically. But you, if, if cost is a consideration for you, you need to be doing that calculation, I think. At the end of the day, there's going to be a certain, you've got your base cost for the printer itself, and there's gonna be savings over time based on how many prints you're making, and there is gonna be a point somewhere, I should go this way, I guess. There's gonna be a point where it's gonna meet, and that's that's your volume. But I think a general rule is, I would just I would just ask you the question, are you selling prints? If not, maybe you're printing a few pieces a year, maybe you're just printing things for memories and you don't necessarily need a professional level of printer for that. And in that case, I would say that I, I wouldn't be using cost as a justification to buy a printer, but that certainly shouldn't discount the first two points that I made. For some people, it's worth, it's worth that extra expenditure to be able to have control over the creative process. But if you're looking at a printer as an investment opportunity, as a business opportunity, and you are someone that creates prints, then I can tell you that I, I can see it becoming very quickly a very sound investment and a, and a very quick return. Just to give you a rough idea, it typically costs me about five to six dollars to create an A3 print. That's including the archival paper and the ink. Whereas if you went to a print shop, it could very quickly cost you north of 30 to 40 dollars per print, depending on where you're going. So I hope that you can very quickly see that if you're printing large volumes, if you're selling things, then this could be a very good investment for that kind of business. So I hope you enjoyed this short look into some of the benefits of owning your own professional photography printer. I'm sure there are numerous benefits. These are just the three that really stand out to me anyway. And I can tell you that ever since owning this thing, I have not regretted it one little bit. I'll drop a link below to the specific printer and the paper that I use. So if you'd like to recreate the same standard, then feel free to check that out. I've been forgetting to ask this lately, but if you like the video, please do hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and feel free to leave a comment below to let me know your thoughts on printing, printing at home, and uh, more importantly, if this has convinced you to get a printer of your own. I'm, I'm genuinely interested to, to find out. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you in the next one.